Let's quickly run through some other issues, Prime Minister, starting with the economy. When Labor left office, unemployment was 5.8%. It's now 6.3%. Growth was 2.5%. It's now 2%. The Australian dollar was 92 cents. It's now around 70 cents. The budget deficit was $30 billion when you took office, and now it's $48 billion. How do you explain to the Australian people that you were elected promising, in your words, to fix the budget emergency, mm -hmm. yet in fact Australia's economic position has worsened under your leadership? Well, I don't accept that. Uh, the boats have stopped. We're the talking about the taxes, economy. The, the boats have stopped. Just finally, Prime Minister, you were considered one of the most effective opposition leaders in Australian history. Do you ever stop to wonder why that hasn't translated into being one of the most effective Prime Ministers? Well, uh, I think this has been a very, very effective government, Lee. A very, very effective government. And but I, I just am extremely when... proud of what's been achieved. I'm very proud of the fact that all the major commitments that we made uh, pre-election have been honoured. The carbon tax wondering... is gone, the boats are stopped, you made those the roads are earlier. building. Yes, and, and I'm going to keep making them. Well, the like... roads are building and the budget is coming back under control. But when you say, very quickly, I know you've got to go, when you say um, that it's a very effective government, are you not saying to the Australian voters who are unhappy with your performance that they've got it wrong? You're being dismissive of their concerns. Prime Minister, welcome to the program. Thank you, Lee. It's lovely to be here. Are you a dead man walking? Prime Minister, that is the exact message that you've been giving over mm -hmm. and over again for quite some time, yet your disapproval rating in the news poll that was out today was 68%. Mm -hmm. Clearly, the public is not buying what you're saying there. Well, I accept, Lee, that things have got to be a little different in the future. Perhaps quite a lot different, one would... Quite considerably different. I, I accept that, Lee. <coughs> Prime Minister... If you do your best and you're unable to turn things mm -hmm. around in a reasonable time frame, <clears throat> will you give your colleagues a promise tonight that you will step aside to give them a fighting chance with somebody else's leader? Well, I am going to give them a fighting chance of winning the election. And I think that's exactly what I can do. But what but I'm what not going to do... But what if you can't do it, Prime Minister? Will well, you give them a reasonable amount of time to, to try to hold uh, on to power with somebody else? Lee, what I'm not going to do is play these Canberra games of ruling in this or ruling out that or, or, hy or hypothesising about what might happen but haven't you down upset, the track. Haven't you upset your colleagues, though, by implying that the only way that you can be removed is if the electorate votes you out, when actually we have a Westminster system and you are um, at the helm because your colleagues put you there? You said at your press conference a few hours ago that good government starts today. Mm -hmm. If that is so... What on earth have you been delivering for the time since you've been elected? Well, I don't say that there's been uh, no good government. In fact, I think you said been... good government starts today. That's well, exactly what you said. Starts every day. Starts at the beginning of every day. But we have had Lee, and I don't want to play word games with you, but we have had obviously a period of introspection but... over the last couple of weeks. That's gone. We've put that behind us. Uh, and again, if you don't mind me saying so, Lee. Uh, there is a lot of good news out there, uh, as, as well as a lot of disappointing news. Economic growth, 2.7% now, 1.9% a sorry, year ago. Sorry to interrupt you, but how can Jobs you say, growth, how can three you say times in 2014 it, How can you say you've put it behind you when such a, a significant block of your own party room has lost confidence in your leadership? Well, the important thing is to ensure that having been returned, um, the confidence and the trust grows. And every day, that's exactly what I'll be doing, Lee. Why have you been giving Australians a government with training wheels on? You had the Tony Abbott in opposition, the guy who promised no more chaos, the mm -hmm. adults back in charge, there'd be no excuses, no broken promises. Then there's the Tony Abbott that we've had so far in government with the surprise policies and the broken promises and the captain's picks. Now you're offering us a third Tony Abbott, one who's going yeah. to change. Yeah. Who are you? Well, Lee, um, let's just focus for a second on the captain's picks. There have essentially been two captain's picks. There was we, the paper. Can we actually just focus on the big picture yeah. there? Because there's been three different yeah, but, Tony but, Abbotts. I, ju I just want to know, yeah, you know, yeah. which one are you? Who are you? Well, Lee, I will let the Australian people um, form their own conclusions, but let's just go back to the captain's picks. How about my point, though, that there have been three, you know, we're up to Tony Abbott 3.0. Do you accept that you have thoroughly confused the public about what your government is and what you stand for? The, let's look at the situation that we inherited, Lee. Can, uh, we, can we just look at the big picture about you? No, no. I, I, I'd, I'd rather have a conversation rather than an argument, Lee. And no, I no, think but that's... It's a, I think it's a reasonable question yeah. and one that voters yeah. would be yeah. asking themselves and that it would be remiss yeah. of me not yeah. to put to you. And, and let me answer it by saying 
going into la the, the, the last election. But it's, it's interesting that you're not able to answer the question to me, who are you? What do you stand for? Wh which Tony are you? Well, obviously we stand um, for um, a government uh, which uh, believes in lower taxes, smaller government, greater freedom. Uh, we, st we are a government uh, that believes in values and institutions that have stood the test of time. Above all else, though, we are a pragmatic government which wants to do what works. And if we try to do something sensible one way uh, and it doesn't work, we'll try to bring about the same sensible outcome in a different way. And there are challenges, Lee. We at least accept that there is a serious fiscal challenge, that a bit of intergenerational theft has been going on, that the former government started, and we are determined to fix. The Labor Party is in denial about all these things. Now, um, you can embrace a government which is not perfect, but which is at least fair income, uh, or you can go with the people who gave us the problem and now trying to say uh, that it's none of their fault and they're not even going to address it. Tony Abbott, welcome to the program. Evening, Lee. You were pretty loose with the truth today, weren't you, when you said that BHP's decision to put the Olympic Dam project on hold was partly due to the federal government's new taxes? Not at all, Lee. I'm going on the facts that Marius Kloppers said today when he was directly asked if the decision on Olympic Dam was affected by Australia's tax situation, and I'm going on the facts that are outlined in their results statement that they've issued. Have you actually mm -hmm. read BHP's statements? No, but I've also got again uh, the statement of, uh, uh, of Jack Nasser, who says, uh, uh, while we're still evaluating the impact of the carbon tax, but it just makes it more difficult. But hang so, on, no, no, you haven't read their statements today, but, you, uh, but you're on commenting about what they've announced today and how mm -hmm. the federal government's to blame for that. How do you know more what's to blame than Marius Kloppers, who I presume has read his own documents? And... Uh, Lee, I've been reading what they've been saying for the last few months. Why have you referred repeatedly to illegal asylum boats coming to Australia? Do you accept that that's illegal and that, that seeking asylum by any means is legal? Um, most of the people who are coming to Australia by boat uh, have passed through several countries on the way and if they simply wanted asylum, they could have claimed that uh, in any of the countries through which they'd passed. But I don't believe that it's actually illegal to pass through countries on your way to somewhere where you want to um, have asylum. You, you try turning up in America uh, without documents, without a visa, without a passport, uh, you'll be treated as very, very much illegally. Uh, the other point I make, uh, uh, from recollection at least, is that the very term that the government has officially used to describe these vessels uh, is suspected illegal entry vessel. Do you, I'm asking you though, not about the government, I'm asking do you accept that it's legal to come to Australia to seek asylum by any means, boat, plane, that it is actually legal to seek asylum? Uh, I think that people should come to Australia uh, through the front door, not through the back door. If people want a migration outcome, they should go through the migration channels. That's, that's an answer to the question if I asked you how do you think people should seek asylum. It's not an answer to the question, is it legal to seek asylum? Uh, and Lee, it's the answer I'm giving you. Do you think that the nature of politics um, allows politicians to be a little bit free with the facts in their statements, just as part of the game of politics? Uh, I certainly think that we had an example today in the parliament of the Prime Minister caught out misleading the parliament uh, but typically of this Prime Minister, uh, she just tries to brazen her way through it by refusing to answer the question. But how about, how about uh, well, speaking, said, of, speaking of answering the question, how about you? On questions of being um, loose with the truth, I've, I've run you through three, three examples there on BHP, on the carbon tax and on asylum seeker boats where people would say you've been a bit loose with the truth. And I've given you answers to demonstrate that what I've said is entirely justifiable. Tony Abbott, there's always lots of things to ask you, but I'm afraid we're out of time. Thank you very much for making time to speak to us. Thank you.